Having a net worth of $50 million gives you access to the entire world. It's a good thing Ewan McGregor is in that category. Obi-Wan Kenobi earns a lot of money and spends it on an extensive collection of motorcycles. Here's a close-up of what he's collected. Ewan McGregor is a Scottish actor who has one of the most impressive resumes in the industry. At the time this video was produced, he has a net worth of $50 million. His most famous role is playing a young Obi-Wan Kenobi, and we can hardly imagine anyone else playing this incredible role after Alec Guinness. Although some of us are still swooning over him since his portrayal of Christian in the 2001 movie Moulin Rouge. With such an impressive filmography under his belt, McGregor has definitely made some cash, and he's spending it on one of his greatest passions, motorcycles. One of the most expensive motorcycles in McGregor's collection is a custom-made Indian Larry Chopper, which he obtained in 2012. These custom bikes start at $65,000. This means that he could have spent much more money than that. The company is called Indian Larry Motorcycles, named after Larry Desmond. He earned the nickname Indian Larry because he used to travel New York City in his Indian chopper. He had the philosophy that building choppers is more than just building something to ride. It's also a work of art. Larry was also a stunt rider, and he passed in 2004 at the age of 55 from injuries sustained from doing a stunt. Knowing this, it should be no surprise that McGregor's most prized motorcycle is his Indian Larry Chopper. He did sell one Indian Larry Chopper at auction for over $25,000 in 2017, which has been christened as The Machine. McGregor first fell in love with motorcycles when he was a teenager after visiting a Ducati dealership and saw a modified Moto Guzzi. McGregor and his longtime friend Charlie Borman have been on epic motorcycle adventures together. One of those trips involved riding from the southern tip of Argentina and heading to Los Angeles, all on a motorcycle. For this trip, the pair wanted to be more eco-friendly and they went with two Harley Davidson live wires, which retail at around $29,799 each. Since they're electric, they're way more expensive than your traditional motorcycles. They traveled over 13,000 miles through 13 countries and 16 borders. But the pair did run into one major hiccup on their trip. The region where they were traveling didn't have a lot of charging stations, so McGregor and Borman found themselves knocking on people's doors and asking them if they could plug in their Harleys. The adventure was filmed for a TV show called Long Way Up, so if you want to see how everything turned out on the trip, you can. McGregor's BMW R1200 GS Adventure is legendary. The motorcycle is worth nearly $20,000, and it's one of the prettiest in McGregor's collection. Many people know this motorcycle because he rode it during his second adventure with Charlie Borman in 2007, which was the subject of their show, Long Way Down. The pair rode from John O'Groats, which is a village in Scotland, and headed to Cape Town, which is the capital of South Africa. They started riding on May 12, 2007, and arrived at their destination on August 4th. In total, the pair rode 15000 miles. This bike was ideal for this long trip, as it's one of BMW's dual sport motorcycles. It has a 1,170cc two-cylinder boxer engine with four valves per cylinder, so it was ready for the trip. The BMW R1150GS was the bike that McGregor took on his first adventure with Charlie Borman in 2004. At the time this video was produced, it's worth around $15,420. The pair rode the bikes from London to New York for the TV series Long Way Round. They traveled across Europe and through Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Russia, Canada, and the United States. In total, they traveled 22,345 miles in about three months. BMW provided two R1150GS for the men, and it ended up being amazing PR for the company. What's funny is that McGregor and Borman originally approached another company, KTM, about providing bikes. KTM turned the pair down, and I can imagine they've been kicking themselves ever since. The BMW R1150GS ended up being the perfect motorcycle for the trip with a shaft drive and a 1130cc horizontally opposed flat twin engine. It was named best sport touring bike by Cycle World magazine in 2000 and then it broke the 2002 record for the fastest world circumnavigation by motorbike. So overall, it was a better choice. We have to give a shout out to another bike in McGregor's collection. The 2002 Moto Guzzi V11 Le Mans Tenny is one of the rarest bikes in McGregor's collection since there were only 170 made and 33 of them were bought in the United States. It's worth around $13,900. One can imagine that if you want McGregor's actual bike, it'll be a bit more expensive. McGregor considers the 1972 Moto Guzzi V7 Sport as one of the most beautiful bikes that have ever been built. Remember, it was a Moto Guzzi that ignited his love for motorcycles. Moto Guzzi is the oldest European motorcycle manufacturer that's still in production. This vintage Moto Guzzi V7 Sport is worth $11,600 and is known as the original factory cafe racer. 
Some have even argued that it's one of the most important motorcycles in history. This is because it laid the foundation for future motorcycles, and numerous manufacturers will look to the 1972 Moto Guzzi V7 Sport as the blueprint for modern machines. So yeah, that's pretty significant. McGregor has a great relationship with Moto Guzzi too. He's filmed promotional material for the company as an ambassador, and to get an endorsement from Obi-Wan himself is pretty legit. But this isn't the only Moto Guzzi in McGregor's collection. Every time McGregor filmed a promo or commercial for the company, they gifted him with a motorcycle. So there's no telling how many Moto Guzzi's he actually owns. We know about the 1972 Moto Guzzi V7 as well as a 2000 Moto Guzzi V11 Sport. We're not sure if this was gifted to him or he bought it with his own money. Either way, the partnership between the two really helped amped up McGregor's collection. The bike was worth $11,490 at the time this video was produced. It has CRG levers, Rizoma mirrors, Magni half fairing, and an Augustine Mandelo exhaust. So this is a pretty fancy bike. McGregor mentioned a 1956 Sunbeam S7 in passing during an interview with Bloomberg in 2016. During the conversation, he mentioned that he was barred from riding motorcycles because he was filming the movie Train Spotting 2 in Edinburgh. This was because Miramax's insurance wouldn't allow it. Mainly it was because of the risk involved. If McGregor got into an accident and was injured, the entire movie production would be shut down. So his 1956 Sunbeam S7 had to stay in the garage, waiting for its owner. These days, this vintage motorcycle is going for almost $10,000. Knowing McGregor likes to get his hands dirty, he's probably worked on this bike quite a bit. Not much is known about McGregor's 1980 Honda Goldwing, but it is a beauty to behold. This was another motorcycle that he put up for auction by Dogtown Cycles, and while the bike is typically worth around $6,180, it went up for auction for nearly $20,000. Again, that celebrity inflation can really bring up the price. When it went up for auction, it only had 697 miles and was in pristine condition besides some cosmetic damage due to age. That's a testament to how well McGregor takes care of his collection. The 1974 Mot Moto Guzzi El Dorado police bike is worth around $5,800, and it is one of the most popular bikes made by the manufacturer, so it's no surprise that McGregor has one of these in his collection. His bike in particular still has an original siren on it. The bike was originally marketed for the Los Angeles Police Department because if it could crack the LAPD, Moto Guzzi could get anywhere. The 1952 BSA Bantam D1 is one of the oldest vintage motorcycles in McGregor's collection that's worth around $3,600. The Bantam is so stereotypically and delightfully British. It was based on German design that was gifted to the British after World War II as part of war reparations. This bike is one of the original models that was released between 1948 and 1971, but it's not a bike for speed since it only goes 45 miles per hour. It looks like McGregor also bestowed this to Dogtown Cycles, who put it up for auction for about $10,000. This is just a glimpse of McGregor's extensive collection. Did you know that while filming Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, you and McGregor couldn't resist making lightsaber noises while filming the fight scenes? George Lucas had to keep reminding him that the special effects would be added into post-production. We have to wonder if McGregor makes motorcycle noises when he's not riding. The world may never know. Thanks for checking out this amazing motorcycle collection with me. Be sure to check out our other amazing videos on the richest. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.